Professor Savage, Alan Phillips, aka Alan Phillips, Professor Black Belt. Walked into the Jiu Jitsu gym at uh, 67. 67, yeah. 67 years old. You're talking at the microphone. Yeah, I'm yeah, 67 years old. I walked in here. How does it feel? It feels good. I feel good. I'm happy I'm here. Uh, met a lot of nice people. It's opened my uh, my eyes to humanity. Mm. That's for sure. Uh, I kind of I have a positive attitude, but then again, I'm always kind of a loner, and there were reasons for that. And now I'm kind of people have done you wrong over the years or just acted uh, not in just the very, best way. Very kind of streetwise, where I don't want to have them come on top of me and do numbers on me. So. You know, you know, in, in jiu-jitsu, right, you're, you're around a lot of, you know, like police officers and security, you know, guys. And, uh, you know, when I was younger, like, uh, I was friends with a lot of guys who who were, like, security at uh, at nightclubs and those kinds of things. Yeah. And uh, you kind of see the worst of people in those, in those, a lot of those, 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 those play, the time that, that, you know, late at night, like, drinking, right? And that uh, jiu-jitsu is, like, in a way like the opposite right you see like the like a lot of good in people is that is that why you feel that way like yeah it, it, yes i do i feel uh, uh i've been around a lot of drunks in my life mm -hmm. and uh i've seen people take one drink and their whole face and expressions change their attitude and a lot of the uh I don't know if you call it the real part of them comes out mm -hmm. but uh when you're here on the mats and you're rolling with somebody you don't know or you're mm. rolling for the first time and you see where they're at because they get under pressure and what shocked me is they don't cop an attitude. It's like, okay, you know, you did that to me or I've done that to you. And it's a whole different element of, of uh, seeing humans. Definitely, definitely. It's real, right? And there's it's, no, there's no fakeness. It's, it's real yeah there's that as real there's, as it gets i've only seen one guy in the eight years here that came in with an attitude he woke out walked out with a a broken arm he uh came back in months later and i think he lasted two classes decided no the brown belt <laughs> no this was uh this was a uh i think he was he looked like he was military he had mm. like a military haircut oh yeah yeah was, yeah the guy was pretty buffed out mm. and walked in the door strutting mm. with his chest out and showed up and i was surprised because he his whole attitude changed when he came back and he came back once his arm was in a sling and i go okay you know the guy's taking a look at it his attitude has changed mm. came back walked in the door has changed attitude was really nice mm. and then there was a couple of classes and he was gone so, uh, but I, th I think even that experience for that man, he looks at life a lot differently now. There's no doubt about it. I don't think he's going to be strutting around like a peacock anymore. That's for sure. What does it mean to you to receive your Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt? What does it mean to you? Uh, <clears throat> I look at that as, I was thinking about that because I've had people ask me that the last week or so. And I am look at it as when I started here as a white belt, I was I looked at it as being kindergarten mm. at the age of 67 years old. And I went to first grade, second grade, third grade. Eight years later, I've, I've just graduated basically elementary school, you know, eighth grade. And I'm looking at it now as now, so I, I've learned, I learned the language. Mm. I've learned, learned how to maneuver. Uh, like in school, you learn, you learn math, you learn essay, you learn history, and then now it's time to start applying. What and you the so, the social skills too, right? In every level, right? Definitely. How to how to be around others and how to Definitely. get the most out of that. Yeah, right. I, li I like. Uh, uh, you're able to get along with your classmates, the same as in school. You, if you come in and you're a bully, mm. they're gonna, somebody's going to straighten you out. Or if you're not and you're being bullied, uh, your education, you get the education on those elementary school levels. And I think that's what it does for me. 
personally. I don't know about anybody else, but it's kind of gave me the education that I needed. And now I'm looking at uh, basically working for my doctorate. <laughs> you know, I want a, I want a PhD. I want I want it. I want to know everything I can learn about it, about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And uh, if I see some situations that I can take into my my knowledge, mm. which I, I find now every day, uh, I try to apply them, see if they work, and if they don't work, I move on. But I, I kind of look at it as like, uh, when I was a kid, I liked biology, and I loved doing uh, working on a lab. Uh, and I went in a different direction in my life, but it was the excitement of looking at something new and then seeing what you can learn about it and then discover what's coming out of what mm. you're learning. Mm. And this is what, to me, jujitsu is all about, along with a lot of other things. So getting the black belt is just a start. Yeah, yeah just a start. You know, it's just, it's, you know, you're 67 years young, you know, I think, you know, we talk, I was, we joke like, man, I, I feel like I'm 25. You're like, I feel like I'm 25 too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but, uh, it's just, uh, you know, you're never too old to, to start again. Right. Yeah. You, the video, you did the video, right. They never too late to be a savage, but you're really never too old to start. And that's what keeps you young, right? Like learning and, 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 you know, trying things, right. Trying yeah. different things. Yeah, d definitely. It's, uh, uh, this is this is my fix every day. It's like uh, uh, people go out and they they need their sugar fix or whatever mm. they need, and and I got to get in into here to legacy. I mean, there's makes there's, you happy. <laughs> it, it, it makes you happy. It definitely makes me happy. It puts a puts a really good a good smile on my face that I wasn't getting prior to jujitsu. Mm. I was, there was a whole different attitude about, not that I didn't enjoy my life mm -hmm. the, before I started here, but uh, this has put the frosting on the cake. It's gonna keep coming. What parts make you happy if you break it down? You know, you're, 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 you're a wise, wise savage, you know, you're wise. Why I was, I was ask you, I was talk to you and get it, you know, life advice and, 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 and you always drop like, you know, deep knowledge on me. Um, so like, why does it make you happy? Why do you think, you know, for you, others, why does, why does, why does the jujitsu, why does the, you know, the, the whole thing, right? The community, why, why does it make you happy? Uh, I was in a parade once, um, was it a Halloween parade? Or, and I dressed up. There was a movie called The Flash. The Flash. Yeah. And I had this Flash outfit on. It was green, I think. Like the fast the fast uh, superhero? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something mm -hmm. like that. And I and they talked me into going to this parade up in I was Santa Barbara or someplace up mm -hmm. there, street parade. And I got in the parade, and I'm squatting down, and I'm moving, and Mm. All these kids that were about four or five years old, I get in there and I look at them and I just see the smiles mm. and they were getting a kick out of me. And one of the things about jujitsu is I see people looking at me and I'm making them laugh at it. And I'm going, I don't care what you're laughing at. <laughs> if I'm doing something wrong, if you think I'm an idiot out here, uh, uh, you know, whatever they're thinking, I don't care. But I know that for some reason, you know, like Marco, Marco gets that smile on his yeah, face. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> you know just, he's talking, to him, <laughs> joking about you. <laughs> you know, and he's had, uh, I'm glad I can put a smile on his mm -hmm. face, you know, and, and, and there's a lot of other people that do that. And uh, so that's one of the things that makes me happy. Uh, then also being able to train, stay in shape, that definitely makes me happy. Uh, uh, my wife took a picture of me. <laughs> I'm glad you brought it. Been that that's, oh, that story so funny. No, this, is, this is a different picture. Oh, oh a different one. Okay, okay. And, uh, yeah, she did the one where I was uh, Valentino and I were in front of uh, Master uh, Carlos or, Gracie and Helio Gracie. Uh -huh. Yeah, and they and she asked me if I are you older than that guy? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and, you know, my, then she took a picture and we went to her, one of her girlfriends uh, out in Malibu last Sunday. 
And they're all laughing. They're looking at me. And I'm going, okay, Dawn. She had her phone out. Mm. And I said, what are you showing? And I had never seen the picture. <laughs> I'm sitting on two bar stools with my legs up, stark naked. Oh, my God. And I'm like, I'm just out. And my eyes are closed. My mouth is hanging open. And my gut had just popped like this. And I go, oh, God. And she's showing this to her girlfriends. And I said, you got to put that away unless you want me to pull some pictures up of you. So this morning, you know, she, she, keep, she was keep bringing this up. And I told her, I said, you know something? I, I go to jujitsu every day. I work out to make myself feel good, mm. to have a certain image about me. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, my body is not ripped. Uh, I feel like I'm pretty good shape for my age, but I have this image of mentally being young and physically being young. Mm. And I said, I go, honey, don't take pictures of that like that anymore because when you showed it to me, that haunted me until mm. I figured out how to delete this picture. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's deleted, but the image is there. So I back up to, I think, what was the question you were saying is, uh, uh, it's the, these what are, makes you happy. And yeah, and yeah. These, mm-hmm. are, these are the things that you just, so I look back at it, I go, okay, what time is it? Uh, 7.30, I'll see you at about 2 o'clock. Honey. <laughs> I'm out of here. I'm going to go work out. And she understands. And that's what makes me happy, being able to know that the jujitsu is keeping me physically good, that I can walk out the door in the yeah. morning, get yeah. up at 4 o'clock in the morning, have my coffee, maybe get something to eat, mm. go work out and take care of everything else I need to take care of during the day. So uh, I think the list goes on if I really want to... I was with, uh, you know, Sururu yesterday, we were doing the Jiu-Jitsu magazine and, uh, you were sitting there with your rash guard and, you know, you're, yeah, I mean, you're, you're strong, you know, your arms, like you can, you like, you're, <laughs> you looked real, like strong. I was like in lean, lean, and lean, you know, oh. and we were kind of like, when we were t- kind of talking about, I was like, man, you're like, you know, lean and mean, you know, we're saying, well, I, 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 I think the strong, some of the strongest things on my, are my, my legs used to be really strong mm. because I used to kick a lot in fighting. And, but my shoulders have always been, because I surfed Mm. for like, started surfing like in what, 1959, late Mm. 59 or something. I was out in the water at least four times a week for years and years. So I had those back muscles Mm. and and the speed to pop up. And and, uh, I think it was about 12 years ago, I had to stop, but I was still riding five foot 10, uh, seven pound uh, piranha, rusty piranha surfboards that I had shaped for me. And, uh, and, uh, but that's where I got my back muscles and my shoulder muscles. And now jujitsu, I work in it, working uh, to keep those and strengthen them. And my goal this year is, is I really want those back muscles and my shoulders and arms here uh, to be strong because I'm working, I'm working a lot of Kimura techniques mm. now. And I see, and I've, and I've just discovered the transitions from the Kimuras up top. Mm. Uh, I, I've done a couple sweeps where I pull my knee under the guy's armpit when I have like the key lock on him, sweep him, and all of a sudden that leg comes flying mm. <laughs> at me if I turn him the right way, and I've got the lower in- leg entanglement. Uh, I just you just making me think, you know, like why, why, like why I love, why you know we all love. It's a constant reminder that we're strong and we're capable and you know, like all the hard times and we get interconnected with everybody, right? Like the good and the bad. Like I've seen you come in here with, you know, the cancer treatments and bandages and, you know, stitches and, (laughs) but it's like, it's just a reminder, you know, it's like, you can't, if you're connected, like you're strong, right? You're, you're powerful. You're, you know, so it's like a, for self-esteem, right? For your self-esteem. And I think it tells me I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Especially, especially when I'm going, uh, I've been a little lackadaisical on putting this uh, chemo stuff on me. I suppose she told me to put it on two weeks in a row mm. to make sure everything's gone. I'm a one biopsy she did. and uh, uh, But going through that, it's exactly what you're saying. I come in here and I go, okay, I'm okay. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm rolling, I'm training, I'm okay, I'm going to be okay. Mm. And I look at it as a positive attitude. And... I can, I can see the flip side of the coin. I might've talked about it yesterday, uh, but 
I don't want to worry about making another appointment, sitting at home mm. and waiting on the results, wait, waiting, 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 and, and just dealing with that. It's stressful. And my situation is not as bad as, I mean, there's a couple of people here who got some bad situations mm. and, uh, I'm not going to mention any names, but, and I was glad to see him a couple of weeks ago, come back and, and work. And, uh, uh, and I, I've told, I've told him over, uh, pre pre COVID, uh, and he got back in here. I was telling him about the green drinks and, and, uh, she so come in here and we were rolling together and he got back into the program. So <clears throat> I think it's really good for him. I haven't seen him in the last week or so, but, uh, like to grab a hold of, get him in there more. But it's uh, so everybody's always lifting each other up, right? That's the the culture and that's the the community, right? Everybody's trying to make each other better constantly. Yeah, that's that was uh, that was one of the things. I think that documentary I got a little static from some people saying that I didn't find the same cor- the same thing going on in other martial arts mm. and. Uh, I personally didn't think, and I think it was taken the wrong way. Mm-hmm. And what I what I see here is, and that I didn't realize, I'd go in and I'd see people before I started, and I when I first came, and they they'd be rolling, but then they're sitting around talking on the mat, mm-hmm. and I and I go, oh, what's that all about? Mm-hmm. And a lot of it is they get into some personal stuff, but more than that, they're they're talking about technique. And they're talking about what they did wrong, and somebody that's even a white belt will tell a black belt, or or when you're rolling, showing you a you know, you know, but I think you could have went that way. Mm. Good, I'm glad you're telling me that. It's like um, I roll in with my, I roll in a train with Mike, and he I think he's been here a year or something, or maybe two years, and. Uh, I'm doing a couple transitions technique, and then he says the other day he said, "Boy, I wish I can." put some input into what you're doing with mm. me because I feel like, I, I told him, I said, no, I said, you're helping me just as much, if not more, by working with me because I see the other transitions and when you, and don't feel a, afraid to tell me that, that, oh, this can work here. So we try it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it works what he's saying and sometimes it doesn't. So we either 86 from the game or now we start drilling it and put that into our into the into the combination of transitions that we're working on that mm. day, and this is the type of feeling I have with uh, uh, with the people working here on the mats. I, mm-hmm. I call it work training, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, this is this is kind of like my job. It replaces it places work. I'm not looking for pay. I'm not looking for anything else. I want to be able to know that I've got something to do every day. And I remember when I was a kid growing up and, you know, you're supposed to re, you're supposed to be an old man to retire at, at 62 or something. Mm. I mean, that's crazy. What do you think about that? I'm glad they that, put, that they say like a uh, retire, like to retire. What does that even mean yeah, to retire? I, I look at some of the people that, uh, I don't, I don't know, most people listening, I don't know if they know who they are. It's like uh, Tony Bennett, mm. you know, a man still performing in what was 87. Mm-hmm. A guy named Jimmy Durante, he was, that guy was performing way into his late, late I'm performing, getting on stage yeah, yeah. and doing a 45 mm-hmm. minute show. That's no easy yeah. thing. And then mentally knowing the material, they didn't have any screens. They were looking at the, at the lyrics mm-hmm. and uh, uh, there were, uh, and, and even all these guys are coming back that are the boxers that are fighting mm-hmm. at an older age. Mike Tyson, in. right? Yeah, Tyson's coming back, you know, and just 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 to have the guts to train, mm-hmm. get in the ring and know, hey, one of these young guys can take me out mm-hmm. and yeah, I'll have the money, but I not might be walking around or two right after that. Uh, so that's all inspiring. It's all inspiring. I enjoy that, yeah. Yeah, I remember like Mike Tyson being like, yeah, it's not about, you know, it's, you're in a different place, right, in your life. But it's not about me. It's not about proving. It's just about helping humanity, right? Yeah. And that, like what you're saying, right, it just, it's their example of staying healthy, getting after it, yeah. never, you know, never, 
never stopping, right? Yeah, I, I bumped into Mike Tyson once, and he was at a. I was checking out an after hours club <laughs> in Hollywood. In Hollywood, <laughs> and I would never expected a billion years. Wait, what year was that? Oh, God, what year was it? 80s? It was in the 80s. 80s. Yeah, he was, uh, he was a Iron sh- Mike Tyson, huh? He was, he was. In his shame. heyday. And I got closer to him on the floor than I am with you. Mm. And I was shocked to see the guy is not a tall man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He, he couldn't have been any taller than I am. And I'm like, I'm shrinking a little bit. I used to be five, over 5'8". Five, now I think I'm like 5'7". Mm. Probably because I don't stand up straight. <laughs> <laughs> My spine is going down or whatever. Or the gravity of Earth is pulling me down. But... Uh, but he was, he was like a bull and he just, and, and people were just like this, you know, mm. they were like tight walking around. And as he walked through that club, it was just like, you knew he was there mm-hmm. and you didn't even have to recognize him as Mike Tyson. It just, you looked at you and whoa. I mean, he was yeah. so, so big, right? Yeah, so big he, at he that was, time. Yeah, spe- especially being only a, probably about five eight, I don't know what they say he is, but uh, I mean to this day, was, to this day, big. his legacy and like just how he fought and yeah, yeah, was, was, yeah it's uh, so these these are people. Some people don't want to look up to him, but I I like the guy and mm-hmm. I like what he what he did in his life and mm-hmm. where he came from, mm-hmm. and you know he had people take advantage of him, but he's he's rebound, mm-hmm. uh, which is good, good. Yeah, everybody's got a good heart if they give him a chance. Yeah, yeah. I watched all his uh, a lot of a lot of his stuff after, and he's, it's really cool to see him in that. Did you watch that Hangover, mo- hangover movie? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then they go to Vegas, and then they, like they see Mike Tyson. That was that's uh-huh. the first time he kind of coming back, you know, and the like the mainstream, you know, like uh-huh. so everybody's like cheered for Mike Tyson, you know. That I, I forgot when that was, you know, but everybody loves Mike Tyson, yeah. especially like today, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But he says it out. He says it out. It is how he feels. You know, if he doesn't like a reporter, right. He'll tell him that straight out, <laughs> straight up. Straight out. Uh, yeah, well, you know, what do you, what, what else you we know, got? Right. What else what we you, got? Yeah. What are you going to do about it? Yeah. What are you going to do about <laughs> it? Nothing. <laughs> you even might if, shut up or, or <laughs> get out of the room. If, even if I'm out of shape, you're not going to do it. <laughs> Have we seen some of his videos of him hitting pads and stuff? Well, oh, you yeah. saw the fight, right? Yeah, you saw the yeah, fight. Yeah. 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 Uh, At fifty just, something, right? Well, yeah, he's uh, yeah. Uh, it, it it just goes to show you that uh, the, I think no matter what age, there's uh, I mean, look at uh, I don't you know who Jack Elaine was, mm-hmm. of or, course. Yeah, Jack Elaine, the guy's like about what five foot three, mm. and he's got a rope in his mouth. And I, he's pulling a freighter in San Francisco Bay and move, moving it. And I, the guy was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And it just, uh, there's, there's people like that. There's people like that. You show up consistently, right, Ra- around 9 o'clock almost I, every day? No, no, I'm coming. Nine, you used I to come, come in at 8, yeah, right? Sometimes eight, I come nine. in. Mondays I try to get here at 7.30. I spread, 7 30, okay. spread a match down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then, uh, and, uh, uh, but I, I'm coming in now. About eight eight thirty, to stretch out before uh, a couple of guys that train with me. Are yeah, here. you drill and you you know do some of the classes and, and then you leave maybe around one thirty two depending on depending right, on the day what uh, you have going on. Right, right. But on average, right. Yeah. And so it's a lot of hours on the mat. What does your diet look like? You uh, know, you, I mean, you you know, you're seventy seventy five. Seventy five. Seventy five. Same age as my dad. Yeah, pushed to seventy six there. Uh-huh. Sir. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh My diet. Like, what is a daily, you know, daily routine of, of eating look like for you? Uh, what do you put in your body? I'm putting in, my wife does a lot of salads. Mm. We're doing, we were, some weeks we're almost 100% vegetarian. So uh, when, you, when you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing that you do? Make my coffee. Make your coffee. I'm a coffee addict. Okay. Just, and uh, I had to have my coffee. Uh, I don't like putting something heavy in my stomach. Do you stomach. drink water or anything before you drink your coffee? Uh, I drink I drink, I'll get up to pee a couple times during the night. Mm. It's like, my body's like clockwork. Mm. When, I, when I get up, I know it's one o'clock, mm. plus or minus. Then I get up again, it's like three thirty, four o'clock. And I drink. How many hours do you sleep at night? Because we've, I've, I've, I'm, I'm always asking him, you know, and you're yes, like, yeah, I, don't last, I sleep. Last night I got home a little late, so I slept about six hours, five hours, something like that. Is that average for you? 
Because uh, you've told me like I don't if I sleep more than five hours or six hours like yeah. I don't feel good. Yeah, I feel six, better when I six six hours six mm -hmm. hours with this daylight savings thing mm -hmm. going on. It's, it's throwing me off, so I've been sleeping a little longer, and mm -hmm. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. And I gotta I, I'll get adjusted to it. But my diet is basically vegetarian. Mm -hmm. I and I um, I'm eating fish. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get a. They came up and they said my my white blood cells were a little low and, and I, the guy gave me blood results i don't know who it was mm -hmm. and and he said you're almost to a point of being anemic and i go what you know and i go so i I've, I've been uh i should be a little more conscious of that uh and i've been eating uh eating some uh fish mm -hmm. but i used to take uh for a number of years i used to take like 25 30 different organic pills mm -hmm. I mean, everything and I think that I've decided to cut that out because it is actually, when I cut it out, I don't have to get up and pee in the middle of the night. Hmm. And I think the process of, of, even though they're organic, these things have been pressed by machine, mm -hmm. they're hard. And I was popping like 20 of these things at a time. And I think all that in my system, because my metabolism burns so fast mm -hmm. and I don't put fat on that it was it was uh, hurting me, so I think I've discovered an answer to that. So uh, I'm gonna my diet is going to be directed more towards uh, you know I eat a lot of blueberries, real, real food. Yeah, real food. Real food. I, yeah, I've yeah. a lot of blueberries. My wife will buy organic blueberries at Costco, and I'll go through a whole pack and you know big pack like a day, a handfuls of the stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, there's times that I just do a lot of nuts and and. But I, uh, but you, do, you know, you realize that, you, that it's always interesting because you, you play with things and you cut things out of your diet to see how you react. Right. And so you're like, yeah, all those supplements, you're like, it's yeah. too much. I do better with food, real food. Right. Right. Yeah. Real, real food. I feel better with it. I, I'll go next door. I put, have put bee pollen on it, mm. on the, on the stuff. And I really like that. You I get the kale smoothie with, uh, with, uh, no, uh, no, no, no sweetener. Right, yeah, I've had those. They're really good. I, th mm -hmm. I have to throw bee pollen in there. Bee also. pollen as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I kind of like bee pollen, and uh, that's that's the kind of diet. I try. But you wake up, so you, you have your coffee, um, um, and then you know what time do you get up usually? I'm up at now about three thirty in the morning. Three thirty in the morning. Three thirty in the morning, and uh, uh, I go in there, throw a hoodie on. I go outside. It's 40 some degrees out. Mm. I flip a couple of lights out, out of the patio area. And before that, I put the hot water on for the coffee mm. and I use a French press. And, uh, that why, do, why, why do you get up that time? Why, why not sleep I, in? Uh, I don't deliberately do it. I, I, my body is, it works like a clock. Mm -hmm. It's just like, if I, if I go to bed at eight thirty, nine o'clock or nine 30, I'm up for sure, mm. one o'clock, mm. then it's a three o'clock, three thirty. Sometimes I go back to bed for like a half an hour while the coffee gets nice and dark, then mm. uh, pop back up, and I start my day. It's been thrown off because it's so dark in the morning know, now. Yeah. You know, and, and you like, tell me you like watch the sun come up right with dawn. Yeah, yeah a lot I mean, of the days, right? I do that. I've got a lot of uh, plants that I'm planting. I've got mm. a lot of uh, guavas I'm putting in the ground. Uh, why do you plant all those? Why do you? Why do you do? I've always been around for years. I got into, uh, I just, for something, I've just always liked plants. And uh, I feel it's just being part of the earth. Mm. And, and it's, it's contributing. To me, it's very zen. Mm. It just, just, I, I go out and I've got, my son and I planted, he brought down bamboo that was about as tall as this mic mm. 20 years ago. And now mm. it's all 20 feet. And I've got them in containers. Had 400 and some containers that I had left, and I moved them all to the new place. Mm. Half of them are in the ground, put them in the ground. The other half are out in containers. So I mm. go out, but I, in the morning, when I like uh, summer, I have to do it three, four times a week. But now mm. I'm doing it about two to three times a week. I water mm. everything by hand with a hose, and to it kind of reminds me of when I was a kid. I used to get down on the ground and play with toy soldiers, World War II soldiers they had, which I don't know if they make them anymore, take the guns away from the kids. Uh, <laughs> but uh, basically, I, I just kind of squat down and I'm watering and I just mm. see these bare pieces of bamboo about maybe two feet high 
And it's just really black bamboo, the green stuff, and the new shoots. Mm. And I just spray them with water. And when that sun comes up, these 20 foot these things of bamboo, if they're not moving, they're just like that. It's like a million diamonds mm. of shining through the water. And it's just, it makes my heart warm. And then mm. I just get moving on it. And if there's some business I have to take care of, I get it done before I walk out the door and come here. And it's, uh, the day goes on. I'll go home now. We'll, I don't know if we're going to call it lunch or early dinner, but then I've got to get something to eat before I go to bed. Mm. So you, uh, you, you must do, do, you do your, your, uh, you know, uh, we call that your chores around the house and stuff, the watering and everything. And then, uh, you have breakfast before you come in. Uh, usually not. Usually so you come not. in just on the coffee okay, uh, and then you bring your kind of a snack and lunch while you come here because you get in here like around around eight eight thirty right I've been nine running, I've been running out the door without it okay <laughs> I, I gotta, but you, you come I, with your uh, cooler you come yeah, in with your cooler I gotta start doing that again okay. because after after drinking the coffee and putting an hour in a, just on the mat yeah training all of a sudden it hits me mm. and there's nothing to eat so mm. I, I've gotta I'm too excited I'm walking out the door and mm. <laughs> getting here. Yeah, get here I go just take the coffee and go mm. you know so uh, and then after you train you have lunch at home yes yeah, yeah, yeah okay. I eat at home now okay what's a typical lunch you said you're vegetarian mainly but some fish as well yeah fish uh, I'm trying to get fish I eat raw oysters I'm buying at the mm. farmer's market nice I'm doing a, a dozen raw oysters just about every week now and uh, those are pretty zen. I open them myself. I got my little French oyster knife. Mm. Pop those suckers open. And uh, that's enjoyable. But it's uh, it's just, I think jujitsu has made me slow down mm. from a very fast lifestyle I've had all my life. Just going, going, going. And I've got that. Now that I've got the black belt it's just kind of like i don't know if i was in a race mm. you know to get there but now i'm just saying i can collect myself and i feel like there's been pressure taking off for for a goal that i don't think i really should have looked at mm. as much as i did mm. you know, i bought i bought that i got that black belt i strapped on i bought it with the kanji right and I bought it two years ago. I hung it on the wall where I train at the house mm. all last uh, year during COVID. I was there and and I just said, okay, you're not giving up. <laughs> you're not giving up. Right, because COVID you was know? you couldn't train like Don. You you didn't leave the house, right? Um, yeah, my wife and, and I we we and uh, and you would you know we stayed in contact with texts and stuff and yeah. you would send me your dummy you know dummy yeah. pictures and <laughs> yeah, the, the yeah. stuff you were studying at home. You know, yeah, I went through. Uh, I bought forty some videos from BJJ fanatics mm. and I'm you know I'm kind of glad I had that time because I went through 40 I went through all the good ones and mm. then I bought a lot of ones that I'm going my god these people shouldn't be training mm. a teaching mm. and uh and it was good for what it was but mm -hmm. there are certain stuff I just there are so many high level guys that contradict what they were trying to sell uh, some guys just to put their name out there and I think BJJ fanatics now you can go in and make your video and right right uh, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're involved in, in yeah. yeah a lot of people are they, and they're starting to do that mm -hmm. but uh i was able to uh yeah i got i got I probably put more hours at home than i did do did here over the years just in uh it was a pool house i had i i bought i had I had bought some uh a zebra mats mm. and i had an area about i think it was about nine by twelve and I had about, I had made two or three dummies that I had made, worked my leg locks with a fiberglass mannequin dummy, and I was building the shock mm. of the uh, bones hitting my wrist, and my bones are very thin, mm. uh, and they're sharp. Mm -hmm. So I, I noticed when I was wrapping my hand around the ankles of this female mannequin dummy, mm. I mean, it was it was nailing me, and I, and I just kept going with it. I, I figured this is good, this is good. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I was, were, th were there any thoughts? Like, go, go ahead and finish. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it was it was a, it was a good experience. It was mm -hmm. like uh, it was a test. It was like being able to gather as much information on a subject mm -hmm. as I could possibly do. 
hide myself someplace up in a cave mm. and just where nobody bothered me mm. for hours. And then mm. when I was done, I'd go back, even in the evening, I'd go back and, uh, uh, and work. Me and a couple of rats. <laughs> I, you, you text me, right? And you're like, I'm, you know, let, letting me know that you're still in the game and, you know, like just positivity to, you know, there was a few of us in the text chat, right? Uh, like, yeah, I'm going to yeah, come back. I'm going to be back soon and see you on the mat. Yeah, the best is yet to come. Um, was there any, any moments like, man, I'm, I'm maybe I'm not going to get my black belt. Maybe I'm, I'm going to have to stop doing jujitsu, you know, is any of that? I, no, I didn't look. I didn't look at it that way. I looked at it that I had to keep doing this uh, over that period of time, uh, and I, I included certain people that I had trained with, mm. and I and I knew uh, there's a couple haven't come back, mm. and uh, they're still they're pretty freaked. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're they're like they don't they don't want to go out, and which I can't see. It's it's uh, uh, I finally finally. I decided to come back. I think it was like the first of March this year, and I haven't worn a mask. I don't wear a mask outside. Mm. I walk into a I walk into a restaurant, and people look at me, and a couple of people have come over and said, "You know, you got to wear a mask." And if they get really, or you can sit over there, mm -hmm. and if they, you know, if they're really going to cop an attitude on me, I just leave, or I go, you know, they'll hand me one, and I'll go, okay, but. Uh, uh, I'm sure you heard the story talked about it. It's, it's, I mean, it's real. It was real and it still is real, but I don't think it's as real as people were saying as far as people, my opinion is. Cause I think you got vaccinated and then you got the booster shot and yeah, you know, I got that, that and you got, and you still got, you guys got it. <laughs> right. Yeah, they, and you're like, yeah, thank God I got it. Finally. What a, what a relief. <laughs> yeah. My, my wife got two shots. She got the, um, uh, Adair, I think it mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. pronunciation. And I got the Pfizer, if that's the right pronunciation. I went, got, she talked me, she got to get a booster shot. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to get, I went and got it. And for me personally, uh, I haven't been feeling too good since then. Mm. I have my cardio, my cardio was good mm. up to then. And my cardio is kind of like off. I know it's off. I know what my cardio should be. I was able to get out in the mat and no problem. I wouldn't even break a sweat when I had guys, guys mm -hmm. really hard with me mm -hmm. and they're dripping and I don't break the sweat, but I just, I, uh, I think about four weeks ago, I was mm -hmm. in like the third roll or something. And I trying to think who I was really with. We were rolling pretty hard. He was he's pretty strong. And, uh, I said, you know, it was like halfway through the roll and I just, you know, that's it. I had to stop and it kind of shocked me. Mm -hmm. That's the first time I've ever done that. And uh, I feel that giving myself a break now in the last four weeks and just working with a couple of my training buddies, uh, it's coming back. I feel better about myself. And uh, for whatever uh, it's worth of what I'm saying, you know, it just, uh, it might be my body, my age took it a certain way. Mm -hmm. Everybody's body's different yeah, as far know. as the booster shot and, and the shots. Uh, I've got, uh, I've got a 42 year old son mm. won't go near a shot. Yeah. My, uh, my, uh, I have, <laughs> it's just good to hear everybody's different experiences, yeah. right? It's, yeah. it's good to hear like from your mouth, like from yeah. you, what, you know, I've how did a, you feel? Mm. I've got a 56 year old son, 56 <laughs> year old, 56 year old son. Yeah. And, uh, uh, 56. Uh, anyhow, you were, you were in, you were in 19. 56 yeah, yeah. About 19 or something mm -hmm. 19 savage uh, um he won't get it my grandson mm. just turned 22 this year he mm. won't get it mm. uh all his buddies aren't getting it mm. they live there my my older son he lives in the big island of hawaii mm. he works back and forth from Kauai to the big island and uh my youngest son lives up in uh, willets uh he's a farmer he grows, grows organic herb uh, for medical purposes this year he didn't uh, the city, the county city and the man has come and taxed them to death. Hmm. So it just can't, it doesn't make any money. Can't hmm. make any money. So, uh, but he won't, he won't get it. And all his friends are all in the nature and, hmm. and uh, living off the grid. And uh, they, they don't need it. They don't want it. They don't want to put it in their body. So 
different philosophies, different generations. You know, everybody has their own thing. I wanted to ask you, you know, the, the, the blockchain technology and crypto, you know, and like some of the, you know, the, the, the youngins, they, they like to say like, don't be a boomer, you know, like a, like a, like a baby boomer, you know, <laughs> you know and you're a baby boomer, don't be a boomer, you know? And I'm like, what, you know, when, when they start saying these things, you know, my kids say it now, yeah. uh, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's like, wow. what, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, just things are shifting. Like, you know, you see like these, these futuristic mo movies, right. Where you're going to be, you know, like a lot of time is spending in the virtual reality. Maybe we were even in that. Right. Um, but, uh, like being in that, that space and things moving over to the digital age, like the matrix. Right. What, what are your thoughts on what I just wanted to hear like the on crypto and those kinds of things, cryptocurrency and just the, right. you know, cause yeah. you're, you're a businessman and you know, been through all kinds of businesses and investments over the years. Uh, yeah. <laughs> or you just, you don't, you don't even think about it. Like you're like, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, uh, my wife said to the, the, uh, watching uh playing with her computer and things mm, and, i see uh i stay away from it now i never was really into the cell phone thing um i mean when i was 16 malibu the malibu inn across from the pier still had a a phone booth mm. where you picked up a thing that looked like a mic off the hook right and you put it to your ear <laughs> and you talked into another thing right there <laughs> and you, and you click the thing, an operator would come in wow. and tell you to put a dime in. Wow. And then the dime, you hear it go down mm -hmm. and you got the call and there's four other people talking on the party line. Wow. <laughs> so, wow. Uh, and then. So but Dawn's on the, she's on YouTube. She's on all these oh, technology watches, things. She watches all that stuff. Yeah. She's, she's. So she's your, she's your connection to that, that side of the world. She, she just, wants to be the connection. Yeah. I don't, I, I can't. Four o'clock in the morning, four thirty. She starts telling me about the world events and all the negative stuff yeah, in the world, yeah, yeah. and I, I just, I just don't want to deal with it. But she, know? she, she messes around with the crypto a little bit. Uh, no, no, no okay, yeah, yeah, okay. No. I'm just but, curious uh, to hear your yeah. thoughts on that. Uh, no, I like, uh, I still an old hard cash person, mm -hmm. uh, very conservative. I believe in real estate. Mm. And if you live as long as I do, you're going to wish you bought some when you were really young because it never goes down. I mean, it may drop up and down, but uh, yeah, I was looking at houses that just sold 25 years ago out in Tahunga and they, uh, they, they rehab them, some of them, some of them, mm -hmm. you know, and the uh, houses are going from seven, 720 to 850. Those houses, there, these are introduction, these are new First time buyer type houses. Uh, 30 years ago, they were selling for 185, 18,005 years. So if you wow. so if you bought a house when you were 18,500 and mm -hmm. they're now they're going for over eight plus or minus mm -hmm. and uh, uh, 800,000. Yeah, mm -hmm. eight, eight or, nine, or plus. Yeah, yeah, plus thousand dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so if you want a retirement plan. That's that's the an best. Order. I mean, even if you had a down payment, it just leaves the place out. Well, I always enjoy talking with you too, just on like just on confidence in life and mindset, you know, just from your experience <laughs> and wisdom. And you're like, yeah, I've lost some money, and you know, you know, make make it back, right? Yeah, I've uh, <laughs> I've gone broke three hard times. Mm -hmm. Three hard times <laughs> three, in your uh, life. Three times, really. Yeah, I got to a point where I go to the bank. I was overdraw overdrawn. You mm -hmm. know, I've overdrawn ten, fifteen, twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. You know, and then thank God I had a good month coming up. Mm -hmm. And those times happen. And uh, I told my cousin came up to me once, and he won a lottery in Chicago. And he he won. That was years ago, uh, twenty years ago or something. He won two hundred fifty thousand. Mm. I said, "What'd you do with it?" He said, "I put it in the bank." And I said, "Why?" He says. You told me once you got to have fu money. <laughs> fu money. <laughs> so I said, I said okay. And I, I they came out here a number of years ago. She still got it. He said, oh, I I bought a house and da, 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 da. I said, Are you okay? And he said, Well, we're living in it. But uh, he went another direction with it. But he still wanted the fu money. 
Uh, you gotta have a little fu, buddy. Yeah, what well, like when you know you lose? What was that? What was that got that got you through? Like to you know to make it back? Like what was what's like a like a memory you have of like you know you down and you know what what do you? Instead of pulling ten hours a day, I'd pull fourteen seven days a week mm -hmm. and didn't stop. Didn't stop. Cut cut deals as much as I could and and bottom line. You see a problem, you got to work it out. Mm -hmm. And if you think it's going to go away with two or three hours input, it's not going to happen. You got another thing coming. There's so many, uh, so many people think they they're owed a living. Which you got to you got to grind. You got to put the time yeah, in. If you want to put it in, I, I see people. You got to commit to, yeah, to so doing much, what you want to do. I mean, look at all the people that come in from out of the country and they've mm -hmm. got nothing. And now they got houses and, mm -hmm. and nice yeah. cars and nice trucks. And they didn't get it because somebody handed it to them. They worked their ass mm -hmm, off. Mm -hmm. And then when you see people that are, that just don't want to work, you know, or they say, I can't get a job. There are a lot of jobs out hmm. there. <laughs> as simple as that. You might, you might, I like to say who it is, one of my relatives. I, I won't work for 14, 15 bucks yeah. an hour. I'm worth 40 or 50. Oh yeah, I know you're worth it, man, but you know. Yeah. There are a lot of other people out there. Yeah, are, like I can't find a job. I'm like, man, yeah. you go to a place you like to go to, yeah. volunteer, say I'll work for free, yeah. do a really good job, yeah. and they're gonna people are gonna find something for you, you yeah. know, right? Definitely. If Definitely. you apply for a place that you know and they don't hire you, like, hey, I'll I'll work for free. Yeah. Uh, they Right? Like there's always people people uh people are you know who they are. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. If that's, if that's what they love and they make it true life, more power to them. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, 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 I'm yeah. Not, yeah. I'm not going to knock them. I just don't understand it. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate always your 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 advice and to me and to, you know, I hear you to tell other people, like, just from your experience. It's it's really yeah. nice to yeah, hear like that. You did. I haven't been up here in a couple of years. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Last time we were I sitting on couches, right? I was shocked. <laughs> like Paintings I was like, everywhere. It was like, it was like a, a designer. Legitimate uh, uh, studio. Nice, nice blue couches, you know, pillows. <laughs> I tried to talk my wife into getting a, a, a sofa like that because... If you get a sofa that goes to the ground, mm. it makes the room look smaller. Mm. You get a sofa like that that's like 10 inches or 12 inches, the floor goes through it to mm -hmm. the wall. Mm -hmm. And those are really comfortable. Yeah, I was surprised. <laughs> so you guys don't need a $4,000 piece of furniture at home <laughs> <laughs> or, or a Ferrari. But you know, if, if you do, more power to you, I guess. Yeah. Different, different strokes for different folks, right? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. it makes the world go round. Yeah. What's uh, what's uh, at the end of the day, you know, like um, what's 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 uh, Savage's legacy? That I hope uh, my family around me picks up uh, picks up some of my inspiration or some of my examples, my successes, my failures, and. I, my dad had a number of failures and I go, I'm not going there. Mm. And that made me successful in a lot of areas. And uh, I had something happen to me uh, graduation here at Black Belt. My brother was there and he's you know, he's a fourth or fifth degree. He, he did uh, Kung Fu for years mm. and he hasn't done it in a while, but he was here and he, he supported me in a couple of fights in Vegas, came in and I was surprised he showed up and he showed up and, mm. and, uh, <clears throat> Uh, we were texting back and forth. He came over to the house. We never had a chance. He was more, he was nine years younger than me. And uh, the other day he told me I was his hero. And man, that, whew, that hit, that hit the hard here. And uh, I didn't realize that what I was doing with my life would hear something like that from my brother. Uh, so I'm not set out to do that. If it, if anything I do rubs off on somebody, uh, cause I can be a real jerk sometimes. I mean, I'm not dead. I'm far from perfect. Yeah, whoever's listening out here, I'm far from perfect. I could be a real, I guess with a P and, uh, uh, but I've learned to catch myself as much as possible. I've learned to apologize, mm. which was always hard for me and accept that I'm wrong, that I still have a problem sometimes. I look at it and my, 
have blinders on. And I go, mm-hmm. you got to stop that stuff, Alan. And uh, I work at it. And I'm glad that I'm able to come here, work work some of that anger out still. And uh, I get too hard on some people sometimes. And I've learned to kind of just like try to flow with that as much as possible because uh, the people that are on the receiving end of that, um, I try to look at it more from their point of view. And I think that's, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard for me. And I'm looking at some of the people that have started here Mm. training and they come in and they've never lifted a finger to anybody. So it seems, and their personalities are just very passive, but Mm. they're here for a reason, Mm. probably because they've been stepped on one way or the other. They want to improve themselves. This facility has turned at least a half a dozen people that I could pick out into men. Mm. And they were already in their mid thirties and forties. Mm. And the way I look at that, they should stand up for themselves. Mm. And I see them from getting pushed around on the mat to taking control of mm. their self which takes control, they have to take control of their mind and they have to understand that they have to be in control if they're gonna survive, but not to hurt anybody. And when you're a striker and a fighter where you where you do street street stuff, you're doing anything to survive to hurt the other guy. And Brazilian Jiu Jitsu if you know it well enough, depending on what level you are, even if you're a white belt, all you know is some basic uh, basic arm bar mm. uh, positions, you have an option, pretty much have an option, maybe 85%, depending on how the man comes at you, to, to stop and just say, should I break his arm or not mm. break his arm? Or if you're a striker with the hands or your legs or, or you're going to Glasgow kiss somebody and butt, headbutt them or break their nose or something. You're going to do damage. Mm-hmm. And for those out there that think that that works, I've seen hundreds and hundreds of fights, street fights, bar fights. It doesn't work, guys. It just doesn't work. You can hit the guy the hardest time you want at a street fight. And you better make sure he stays down because mm. he, because the first thing he's going to do is come back at you, mm. come at you, and he's going to try to take you out. Mm. And that's what I think where, and I'm not knocking any of that. I want to get that clear. It's FT, like I said, teach their own. But for me, I think that's where Brazilian Jiu Jitsu stands out. You're, you got, you got, a, you got an option to learn how to control yourself. You don't have to seriously hurt somebody and as well. You don't, you don't. I mean, you might, you might, you might rip his arm a little bit or something. You, know, you have to, you yeah. know, but you have an option. You have control and more control in the situation. You have, you have an option to choke somebody out. And if he's out, not to finish and kill him. Mm-hmm. All right. Where if you're in a situation, you're on top of somebody in the street and you're banging on his head and then you decide to grab his neck and start banging his head against mm-hmm. the concrete, uh, you lose the option. You get caught up in it. Yeah. And next thing you know, it the guy's dead, or mm-hmm. you get hit for manslaughter, mm-hmm. and you're in jail, and your family is gone, and yeah. you just ruined your life. So anybody listening, if you're thinking about changing, or you've been in that situation where you've hurt somebody, and you might, you might not tell people that you regret it, mm-hmm. but I, you, I mean, I've I've done some people in, mm-hmm. and and uh, to this day, I wish I hadn't done it. And, uh, you know, legacy's here, guys. <laughs> yeah, make, makes you a better person and yeah. gives you the right self-defense uh, techniques, right? right? To handle yeah. a real situation. And, you know, the be- probably the best way, not probably, the best way that I think you can as well. You know, of course, like I believe in striking, right? Having that as well. But uh, to have the jujitsu in your pocket is essential, right? right. There, there's like for police, for, for everybody, right. you know, for there, self-defense. There, yeah, there, there's, a, there's a time 
uh, that if it calls for, I'm not saying striking isn't necessary. Right, right. 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 Uh, I'm I'm doing some uh, I'm doing some transitions and entries into uh, into Camorras that I've mm-hmm. that I picked up on, and it's uh, it's a pretty violent entry. Hmm. And uh, a lot of guys. I thought jujitsu was the gentle art. Yeah, well, this is uh, <laughs> this is my jujitsu right now. <laughs> when I, when I, 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 well, I, I can't give up the violent part. I just can't. It's just, it's, it's, you make it your style. That's like a beautiful, would, beautiful thing about jujitsu yeah. as well. People I was, make show, it their I was own. showing Mike. Mike, Mike. I asked him, "Do you have any experience at all?" He said, "No." I've ever been hit. Mm. No. Mm. It's just like, and I was showing him something because he's he's. I mean, there's several ways to enter a kimura. Mm. Uh, from half guard or guard or, or whatever, and usually guys come high over the shoulder. It's mm. a t- it's it's a tell. Mm. They come a little lower. It's a tell, and you got the guy's wrist. And I and I I got my defense and guard up. I mm. got the wrist. I take the forearm mm. and I nail him right mm. here on that arm and bend it in half. And as I nail him, my arm just slips right into a key lock. Mm. Comes over. And this leg could come also through underneath it. He's into a, he swept him. Mm. But if you bring that foot up on his hip and mm. stretch it out, which is a David Avalon move, mm. uh, that guy's tapping before he knows yeah. it. And you don't even have to bring the arm over. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, 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 uh, it, it can be done in training situation. Mm. But if you're rolling and you got somebody, I feel if you were in the street, you try to break his arm before yeah. you even lock it up. And hit him hard so he knows he got hit and he's mm. going to think about that. And then you finish him. So uh, there's times to be violent. There's no doubt about it. And it's and you pick and choose. It's not just to be in a bar fight. Uh, it gives I you mean, more control, right? In the, the, these kinds of uncontrollable situations. Right. Definitely. I would, it's nice to have it in, 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 in your arsenal. Yeah, if I mean. Not I, nice, but essential to have it in your arsenal. Yeah, if it was a family situation or somebody was doing something, trying to do something to my wife, mm. uh, I I would have to really think about the situation. Uh, I think also even, you know, making decisions, right? Making decisions to help uh, make better decisions under stress, under yeah, pressure. Yeah. It would be a split second decision. It depends on the situation. It's a one-on-one situation. Right. You have time to either do the guy in or not but if you got a couple of his buddies there you better take care of him and then worry about the other ones yeah. or get out of there yeah i yeah. i would say get yeah it's I not worth no, it right it's not worth I it i got no problem turning and running it's not worth it right it's just not worth not it. worth it you can call me a chicken as much as you want you never know i've seen i've seen guys get in a fight they take a guy down and his buddy comes in with a 20 ounce glass schooner yeah yeah yeah. Hit him in the neck. Nobody wins, you know. Hit him in the neck. Yeah. Cut him. Yeah. And the and it was squirting out. And yeah. if it wasn't the paramedics driving by, the guy would have been dead. Mm. It's just it just isn't worth it. Yeah. You're you're in a bar. Something starts. Get out of there. It's not worth it. Well, Savage, you're my hero. <laughs> you're my hero. You. Just for the record, you're my hero. Uh, your work ethic, yeah, just who you are as a person, day in and day out, you know. Um, um, thank you for everything. Thank, thank you. you for everything. No, thank you. I mean, it's my pleasure being here and talking to you, and I love seeing you with your family here. It reminds me when I was a kid, my dad used to drive me around when he was working as a taxi cab driver. Mm. He put me, buried me in the front seat sometime on the floor. When he picked up a flare, a fare, mm-hmm. and I'd pop up and go, whose kid is that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but... uh yeah, I like seeing you here with your wife and your kids, your daughters, your son. And uh, I hope he kicks that thing off his foot and gets waves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hope so too. And down in Panama. Yeah, yeah, good. Thank, Thank you, you, Savage. Thank it's you. A pleasure. Thank you.